We'll now look at including and requiring files in PHP. So we're going to look at four different methods of including and requiring files, or a mixture of these two uh, statements, if you like. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is including. Then we're going to look at requiring and what the difference is. And then we're going to look at include once and require once as well. So what do we actually mean by including a file? Well, let's say that we have a functions.php file which holds uh, a few useful functions that we might want to use throughout our application. Well, you're hardly going to want to go ahead and redeclare them on each page that you build. So what we do is we uh, have a separate file called functions which can be included on any page that we require them and then we don't have to just keep re redeclaring them. So to use an include, you specify include, and then inside of a string, you point to the location of the include. So this can either be a relative or an absolute path, but I'm going to say functions.php. So what I can now do is I can actually um, call this function here. So I could say something like echo add five and six. So you'll see here that we have 11. So we now have included the functions file and we can actually make use of the functions. Now we also have a, um, a way of including files called require. Now if I, for example, um, mistype this or the file wasn't available and I include it, let's take a look at what happens. So let's refresh. You see we've got a warning here uh, and a warning here as well. Now let's just remove the fact that we're actually you making use of the function because that's generated a fatal error uh, since that uh, add function can't be found. So we have two warnings here. So what's happening is anything after this is being run. So I'm just going to say um, index.php. So anything after this has been run despite the fact that we can't actually include this function's file. Now what happens if we absolutely need to uh, kill our application or kill our page if we can't include that file? Well, we go ahead and we use require. Now take a look at what the, the difference between the warning and the warning here is when we hit refresh. This warning will actually become a fatal error. And you see that the index.php string that we echoed out a moment ago is now gone because we failed to open this file. So that's the difference between include and require. But what about include once and require once? Well, there's a difference between these as well, or that they're the same thing, but there's a difference between include once um, and uh, and just include, for example. So let's go ahead and just require once functions.php and we'll see what happens. Well, we echo out the string index.php, we know that that's there. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that and we'll go ahead and use add here. Okay, so we've got the expected result by using uh, require once. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that if I were to copy and paste this line, either by accident or something happened, and I refresh, nothing changes. It, it, it works in the same way. Now, what has actually happened is, upon running this uh, require once, PHP already knows that this functions file has been included or required, and therefore it doesn't include it again. Now, if we were just using require rather than require once, you'll see that that changes slightly and we see a fatal error. And that's simply because of the contents of our functions file where we have redeclared the add function. But we're still messing up our page by doing this. So by using require once, we know that we'll only ever uh, require one uh, copy of this file um, into whatever page that we decide to include it in. So that's include to requires and include once and require once in PHP and how and why we use them.